Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new 2022 Amazon Fire 7. So this is their newest tablet that was released about a week ago, week and a half ago as I'm making this video. And the price on this is coming in at $59. Unfortunately, around uh, Prime Day, they didn't have any sales on this because, like I mentioned, this is their brand new tablet that hit the market. And we should see an upgrade in performance from the old Fire 7. Now, really, what's changed here is the CPU. It's now using a quad-core 2 GHz CPU. It's actually the same one they're using in the Fire HD 8. And they've also swapped this over to USB Type-C. So finally, I think most of their tablets are now USB Type-C. And basically, in the box, you're going to get the tablet, a USB Type-C cable, and a 1-amp charger. Another thing that this new tablet's got going for it is it's using a newer operating system known as Fire OS 8. It's actually based on Android 11 now, and I was really hopeful that this would be a great little budget tablet. Now, don't get me wrong, for video playback and reading ebooks, it's perfectly fine. But it really feels like they put this out because they're kind of expected to put out new tablets every year. And unfortunately, I believe they kind of missed the mark with this. I mean, this could have been a great little 7-inch tablet for gaming and emulation, but it does fall short in those two categories. When it comes to the specs of the 2022 Fire 7 tablet, for the CPU, we've got a MediaTek MT8168V. It's a quad-core Cortex-A53 ARM CPU running at 2 GHz. The GPU is a Mali G52 MC1. This is the same exact SoC that they're using in the Fire HD8. But unfortunately, we only get 2 GB of RAM with this. Even if you upgrade to the 32 GB model, you're only going to get 2, and that really holds it back. I wish they would have added one more gig here with the base model. It definitely would have made the experience a little better. The screen is a 7 inch 1024 by 600 IPS. I mean, it's really not a bad looking screen. Viewing angles are okay for an Amazon Fire tablet. Definitely not a super high resolution, but I completely understand what they were trying to do here. They wanted to keep the price down. It does have AC Wi Fi, so we can pick up that 5 gigahertz network, Bluetooth 5.0. And you can pick this up in two different storage variants. You can opt for the 16 gigabyte model or the 32 gigabyte model, but both of them do support a micro SD card up to one terabyte. So overall UI performance, once everything's loaded up, really isn't that bad. But, uh, you know, launching cold apps does take a little while to start up, especially games like Minecraft. And even going into the settings for the first time, it will take a sec or two to load. And this really comes down to the slow storage that they opted to use with this. Again, they wanted to keep the price down. Using this as an e-reader would work out really well, and that would be a real good use case scenario for something like this. You could load up a ton of books on the internal storage, and it also supports that one terabyte micro SD card, so you could put a ton of stuff on here if you're into these ebooks on Kindle. Another thing that functions really well on here is video playback, be it from Netflix, Prime Video, or YouTube. But again, we've got a very low resolution screen. This might be good for the kids, but I would not pick this up for gaming, and we're definitely going to jump into that in just a second. But I always like to test YouTube video playback, so let's go ahead and check that out. So we're going to go ahead and launch YouTube, and I'm using the YouTube app that I downloaded from the Amazon App Store. You can also sideload Google Play here and download the YouTube app from there if you want to. But this one does seem to load up a bit quicker, and uh, we can get in here and basically play anything we want. Now I'm going to use one of my favorite test videos here. This obviously isn't going to be running in 4K given the screen, but we will be at 720p. And I'm going to turn Stats for Nerds on so we can take a look at if we're dropping any frames at 720. And keep in mind, with this tablet here, it's got a mono speaker. So we've only got a single speaker output on this unit, and it really doesn't get very loud at all. If you're used to using Stats for Nerds, one thing you might notice here is this video is only running at 30 FPS. And I think they've kind of limited it here to 30 FPS. Now I know for sure that this little chip can handle 720p 60 playback, but unfortunately all the videos that I've tested from their YouTube app only run at 30fps. We can't get 60 unless you install a third party app. So the next thing I wanted to test out was a little bit of gaming, and we're going to start off with Minecraft. Now the main thing about gaming on this unit is the load times, and this can really get on some people's nerves. If you have a small child and you want to get them a tablet for gaming, I would not recommend this one. They do advertise Roblox quite a lot along with this tablet, but uh, it doesn't run it well at all, even at the lowest of the low settings. And when launching Minecraft here, I'm not going to speed it up or slow it down. I just want to show you how long it does take to get into gameplay. I do have a world here that I've created, and this is really one of the big letdowns. With a lot of the games that I've tested so far, just getting into gameplay can take quite a bit of time. I know the mobile version of Minecraft isn't the fastest loading game, 
But from the time we start the app up until the time we can get into gameplay, it's about 1 minute and 15 seconds, which, you know, if you're a young child, can be a very long time. And we can now play the game. And by the way, in order to get it to run like you're going to see it run here, I did have to turn absolutely everything off. Fancy graphics, fancy clouds, no bubbles, and I've got the render distance as low as it can go, and it's set to five chunks. So we don't have a very far view distance, and even then, I still think this is only running at about 25 FPS. So when it comes to 3D games, even something like Minecraft, uh, this isn't something I would recommend. Another one I wanted to test was Asphalt 9. I got it all installed, I started it up, and it sat there for about four minutes before I just shut it down and uninstalled it. I couldn't get it to launch. But 2D games do work pretty decently here. I've tested Terraria, Stardew Valley, and Dead Cells. And to tell you the truth, I was actually pretty impressed by the performance of Dead Cells. It's not running at 60 FPS, and I kind of didn't expect it to but it is a playable experience. So it's not bad at all when it comes to 2D gaming. And by the way, we've got built-in Bluetooth. You can always connect a controller. I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth right now. This is just one of those games that does support controllers right out of the box. One of the main things I wanted to test on this tablet was emulation. And you know, going into it, I expected the lower end stuff to work really well. Here we have some GBA, so I mean, if you want to do some PC Engine, some NES, some SNES, some Neo Geo, some FBA, and even DS emulation using the Drastic Emulator, we do have more than enough power here. And when it comes to PS1 emulation, so yeah, I've tested a few different games here. I'm using RetroArch with the PC SX Rearm Core. I expected PS1 to run well. I mean, we're at 60 FPS with Tekken 3 here, but PS1 really isn't that hard to emulate, so let's go ahead and see what it does with PSP. And unfortunately, this is where everything kind of falls on its face. Now, of course, there will be a couple PSP games that are fully playable at 1x resolution, either using OpenGL or Vulkan. But uh, this one here, Tony Hawk's Underground Remix, 1x resolution, Vulkan back in, with all of the hacks that I can turn on from the emulator itself, still struggles to hit a constant 30 FPS. And this one really isn't that hard to emulate, so let's go ahead and move over to something else. So here we are with kind of a mid-range game, Vulcan back in, 1x resolution, and it's struggling to hit 60. So with a lot of this stuff, if you want to do PSP on this tablet, you will have to turn frame skip on, which for some people really isn't a big deal, but uh, I'd rather not even play it. It just makes it look really funky because we are skipping a bunch of frames here. So in my opinion, it's not great for PSP, and I also tested N64, and while yeah, there will be a couple games that are going to be fully playable here, it's just not going to be like a powerhouse with N64 emulation. Mario 64 is going to run on it just fine, but you know, Mario 64 runs on lower end hardware than this already. So in the end, it's really hard for me to recommend the new 2022 Fire 7 to basically anybody. I mean, I could see if you need a cheap e-reader, that would be a reason to pick this up. Uh, maybe some YouTube video playback, but other than that, there's really no reason to pick this one up, especially at the price point of $59.99. Now, if you absolutely have to have an Amazon Fire tablet, I would go with the 2021 Fire HD 10. Usually, they're up refurbished for around $79. I know it's a bit more money, but not by much. It's got a bigger, brighter screen, better battery life, faster storage, more RAM, and it's just an all-around better tablet than the new 2022 Fire 7. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I was really hoping for a good little budget tablet here, but unfortunately I think they just missed the mark. And it really comes down to that really slow internal storage. If they would have added a little faster storage here and maybe an extra gig of RAM, then yeah, this would have been a great little $60 budget tablet. But the way it sits right now, I think, you know, $39.99 would be a decent price for this. But you got to keep in mind, it's still going to perform exactly the same as the $60 version, even if they bring this down to $40. So it's really up to you. If you're still interested, I'll leave a couple links in the description. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.